and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for the return of Mardu Midrange. Played this deck a couple of times before M20 came out, and it was a lot of fun. Now, we don't have too many additions to the deck here, main one being Knight of the Ebon Legion, but we've been wanting to run this back. Have uh, had some requests to, to update Mardu Midrange and bring it back. This is a really fun deck to play, and I'm excited to play it. Basically, what we have here is we just have like some some good cheap creatures, and our deck's built around with those creatures our seven four mana planeswalkers, Soren Vengeful Bloodlord, and a Johnny Adversary of Tyrants. With both of those creatures, sorry, both of those planeswalkers have the ability to bring back our creatures from our graveyard into play. So like our you know like we get ahead early. Our opponents have to use like removal to kill our creatures, and then we use our planeswalkers to bring them back and just try to outvalue and outgrind our opponents. Um, all the while being a little aggressive with cards like Knight and Dreadhorde Butcher and things like that. <laughs> and Hawkeye is like, ooh, aggressive. I like that. You know, I'm getting a pen for him to, to chew on. Um, anyway. I'm going to try Cavalier of Night in the five drop slot. I'm not so sure about Cavalier of Night in this deck. Um, I'm I'm a little worried about casting it. We have 17 black sources, and I, I really didn't want to. I I wanted to add an 18th, but I just couldn't really find a way to get an 18th in here to for like the other colors that I wanted also. Last time that we played this, we had one Masker Girl in the main deck, and so maybe that should be a Masker Girl. But we also got an Angrath here in the main, and we got an Angrath in the sideboard. Angrath is just, I think, the most underrated Planeswalker in Standard. Uh, maybe that's a Johnny Adversary Tyrants. I don't know. They're, they're both right there. I really like me some some uh, a Angrath. I think that's a very strong card. So we got a couple of those in there. And, of course, a Command the Dread Horde, because that card's ridiculous. I'm also going to try a Blood Sun in the sideboard. We just had a weekend where... Uh, Escape Shift did really well, and there's a lot of Field of the Dead decks running around right now. So we're going to have Blood Sun to see if we can stop those Field of the Dead decks. Obviously, they have little Teferi that can bounce Blood Sun. But Blood, Blood Sun still just you know replaces itself, draws a card, can help slow them down and all that kind of stuff. Forces them to have the Teferi. Um, and then also against like Nexus, where Nexus can be uh, a really fast combo deck. Maybe Blood Sun slows down Nexus. Because no more Ascanta activations or Blast Zone blowing stuff up. So maybe it can help out there too. Um, so that's a new card that we're going to try. And if we like it, I may put one in the Jeskai Control sideboard for later on also. But here we go. I like this deck a lot. I think it's pretty strong. I'm just going to go ahead and take it straight to Ranked. Let's give it a try. Uh, Smurf, as far as I know, the Twitch Prime deck just expired, like, yesterday or the day before or something, and, and, like, they haven't really taken down the advertisement for it yet, but it's not available anymore. Hey, Mad Cow. Yeah, it's, it's like, I think it's, I think it's, uh, if you have, like, if you already have a code, you can use the code until the 25th, which is in three days, but they're not really giving out new codes kind of thing. I think it's something like that. Um, basically, all that was in the deck was like and like one Aurelia, one Tajik, I think. Something like that, I think as far as rares go. It wasn't anything too special anyway. So we want to get rid of a Soren here, but now I'll feel bad if they get rid of this Soren, but oh well. Um, do you like Judith and Rakdos midrange? Yes, I do. Do you have a good idea to abuse the Blue Knight's brainstorm? So the caval the Blue Cavalier. Uh, 
Um, not particularly like anything special with it. It works well with a lot of planeswalkers. This is kind of a weird spot. I don't really want to discard anything with Remadi Reveler. Certainly wish I would have discarded a land now, of course. But you know, how are we going to know that we we're going to just draw a bunch more lands? We only had three at the time. This went poorly for us. Let me remind you to fear those born of darkness. I require your body, not your soul. I mean, very poorly for us with uh, basically everything. Melody, Nissa, us only drawing lands. Let's slow this down. Oh, what? I've done the hero thing before. I mean, if they just bounce no, Judith, I'm, like, really dead. Friend. What are they taking up for? No, yeah, so it's different Jeskai to deck, or ju different Jeskai deck today. I'm playing the Drawn from Dreams Jeskai deck that I made Behold, a few days ago. Uh, that we, as you know, like we were talking about uh, putting together different Drawn from Dreams decks. I've got it. So that's that's what I'm going with today.
The last card's always Krasis. Mass manipulation is the bane of mid-range decks everywhere. So can I... Can I play Daredevil? Daredevil gonna really be that good? Like we're basically looking at like melody and manipulation as like our only Daredevil targets. It's gonna be pretty tough to actually pull that off. I think I have to cut Daredevil. All right, and then Playcrafter. So, like, yeah, I want Noxious Craftsman to Spark to be able to take out Nissa. Playcrafter. Um, let's see. With with taking out some two drops, I'm going to cut one of Johnny. You know, with them having the mana creatures, there's just a good chance that Playcrafter uh, trades down. I guess actually, like, killing a bunch of creatures with Masker Girl could be tough. We're going to have to kind of rely on them having the one toughness creatures with me not playing Daredevil. Yes, Legion's End does work on the Nissa lands, yes. Let's give this a try. Nope. You. A land. I don't understand your question, Suvi Suck. Just turn three melody again. Like if I if I you know Chupacabra the butcher they just get to kill one of my other things. Let's grow these Knight of the Oven Legions. Witness the ties that bind us all. The land shall conquer you. I'm 
just not gonna attack with the forest as vigilance. Makes sense. Hey, Blue Jen. Thanks for the resub there. First sub of the day. Harness the elements. I mean, I have Angraths. So, like, I, I do have Act of Trees in. I have Angraths. Land. Come on, land. No. Just wrecked by Entrancing Melody again. Masker Girl would have cleaned up the whole board. Would have been nice. But I mean, if I... I don't have a good attack. Have anything good to do? If I like the problem with attacking is they can just chump block with the land or elf, and then Masker Girl doesn't clean up the board. One, uh, two. You know, if if we do attack with both, and they have like Krasis and Dreadhorde Butcher block both of them, I can like kill one, but not the other. Our opponent's hands were just very, very, very good. And got to give it to him. GG's. Dreadhorde Butcher, of course, is reduced to zero, so it doesn't do any damage. Ripjaw Raptor is really mean.
So obviously I can minus four and get back Ravenous Chupacabra and kill the Ripjaw Raptor. But then my Soren's gone. And I kind of need the Soren lifelink, especially this command and stuff. I really want that lifelink. Yeah, Nissa, Nissa ults, if I don't. I mean, this is just going to be ulting. I mean, because, like, let's let's say I do that. Let's say I grab Chupacabra, kill the Riptar Raptor, then attack Nissa with Masker Girl. Well, Nissa still is going to make another 3-3. Three, three. I'm at 8 still. They're going to be attacking me with these 3-3s, three, and I'm at 8. Like, how am I, how am I winning that? Do not I underestimate my fortitude. And they obviously have all these cards and stuff. It's not like I'm killing Nyssa. The land bestows opportunity for those who are worthy. So they'll ult Nyssa, but at least I have I still have my lifelink now available to me with the Soren during my turn. Certainly wish I knew what they were sacrificing. Thought that's what they were going to sacrifice. So yeah, if if I knew that they were gonna sacrifice something else, it'd be you know I could sack Masker Girl, bring back Masker Girl, and then like with the two one chain, she'd be able to to um, be able to clear everything. But it's just not likely that that they were gonna sacrifice Masker Girl. They didn't. I don't really have too much of a chance, but we've been we've been fighting. But our, our opponent's hand was just so awesome. It was too good. This will not be my final parting. Show remorse, I'll show restraint. This, 
might be a bad idea. The entrancing melodies in particular. Both these games. So mana creature into melody, steal your threat that's killing me. And then Nyssa. That's how each one of these games went. And that's too good. All right, starting 0-1 on the day. Yeah, every game was Mana Creature, and then Melody, and then Nissa. Like, Mana Creature 2, uh, Melody 3, Nissa 4, and then a turn or two later, really big crisis. Nissa's just, Nissa's just a really tough card to beat. She has so much loyalty, makes three threes of Vigilance. It's just a, it's a really good card. So we're going to have one Remodi discard the other Remodi here. At least that's the plan. If for some reason they're not a good Daredevil deck, then I would discard Daredevil. But this this is definitely a good deck for me to have Daredevil. So yeah, we'll have one Remodi discard another. Man, if I knew I had another land in the top two, I would discard this Dragon Skull Summit. These Ajani's could be really good. That should just be an Ajani, though. If, Revel if Reveler drew and then discarded, it would be so much better. <laughs> it's the tough part, discarding before you draw. That certainly happens sometimes. Like it happened last game, like you just discard the wrong thing. All right, we're going to be drawing two cards with the Charter Course. Also get that out of their graveyard so they don't get to finale the Charter Course. Kinship ensures our look how far you've come. Alright, Johnny. Get some pressure going. Cease this. But yeah, they get to kill it. They could kill a Johnny here if they got a lightning strike, but we are putting some good pressure on them. You know, like they're at 12. We got two, three power creatures here. Attack them down to six, the and so on. 
Mm. Certainly wish I could be double spelling. It's unfortunate they had their third shock. It's unfortunate. Oh, Radical, you shouldn't be nervous. You're going to do good. Don't be, you know, like you just hit Diamond 1. You know, worst case scenario, you lose, you go back down to Diamond 2. You were just there, just a little bit ago. And that's like worst case scenario. Best case scenario, you win, you get Mythic, and you're all excited. So don't worry about it. Life will be good either way. These one threes are definitely really annoying. You don't usually play against like these one threes with Phoenix. With them having so many cards in hand, it's just so likely they bring back Phoenix. Let's get get an auger out of here. Maybe next turn we we'll get the other auger out of here. Uh, get some surprise attacking in, maybe. No, stop finding your phoenixes. Well, the lucky cat color doesn't seem like it's been red today. So let's let's see how blue is. Yeah, they're going Anticipate and Shimmer possibility. They got some really impressive velocity through this deck. That third shock was really critical. It certainly was. So, all right, cool. Third Phoenix would have been pretty rough right there. So the big question is if we are dead or not. That's the big question. They got four points of burn to finish us off. I don't have very much stuff for Phoenix here because I'm not playing Lava Coil. You know, like I'm, I'm playing. I'm specifically playing removal. That's good against a lot of other things, but not Phoenix. You know, like Legion's End, Baffling End, being like my Exile removal. Like neither of these hit Phoenix. So if, honestly, Phoenix is pretty rough. I have like this one to Spark over here, and that's kind of about it. 
Going with the Daredevils, of course, because usually the Phoenix decks are playing Coil. I mean, Daredevil's just awesome in this matchup. Let's see. Midnight Reaper, Judith, Playcrafter. These cards are not so great here. I don't want Command the Dread Horde. Gideon's probably better than the other three drop creatures. Because my three drop creature is just uh, dying to dying to shock is not ideal. So I want the other Angrath over another Midnight Reaper or Playcrafter. Kind of do. Oh, there's no red mana here. Starting with some rough games. Great draw. Your champion, your light will cleave the Gain's a great one. Besides getting a fourth land, I would like a Daredevil so I can be able to have Daredevil coil if they find Phoenix. Which, there's a Phoenix. No. Don't bring the Phoenix back. Yay, no Phoenix. Let's just take up Soren this first time, but playing it given this Gideon lifelink. Time for drink. I will lend you my strength. All right, we want to draw Daredevil. No land, just pass the turn. Ooh. That's lucky. Okay, let's see. I 
I demand servitude. Believe in you, friend. All right, well, that's probably game. They've used multiple. They've used three ops so far, so it's gonna be kind of hard for them to have one mana spells, and then two other. You know, one spell and then two other spells to get these phoenixes back. They have to have two other one mana spells. But they've already played three ops. Well, there's the fourth opt. Never mind. I guess they could get it back. No. Nope. Okay. <laughs> Cavalier or Knight's just really slow also. Is Midnight Reaper better than Cavalier of Knight? Ugh. Yeah, unfortunately, Baffling End and Legion's End don't do anything here. No, neither does Noxious Grass, but I don't want Massacre Girl. I don't want Command the Dreadhorde or Blood Sun. Like, the only two cards in the sideboard that are even worth considering are Midnight Reaper or Playcrafter. Are either of those better than Cavalier of Night? Cavalier of Night's just so expensive. I think so. Let's let's take that out here on the draw. Just, I don't really want either one. I don't know which one I would rather have, though. I guess Reaper. I guess. <laughs> yeah, Rekindling Phoenix is really good in this deck. We could we could definitely be playing Rekindling Phoenix. certainly an option like instead of the cap you know i'm trying out the cavalier of night but good chance the cavalier of night's not really worth it oh what cat color did i just go with did i go with white that was our lucky color which i can't remember my lucky color i guess it was white i think so I was not expecting Flame Sweep, to be honest. I was not expecting that. Just every chart, of course. Gosh, that card is so good. Hey, what's up, Racket? Welcome back. Thanks for that to resub there. All right, so I don't... A Johnny uses my mana the best of, like, a Johnny minus get Dreadhorde Butcher, but I don't want to do that because they are almost certainly getting Phoenix back. Here. I'm kind of having a waste of a turn. I think this is better than going Daredevil Charter Course because we have a good number of cards... I kind of need the Daredevils to be able to recast the like, Lava Coils. I'm. I would like my opponent to Lava Coil Butcher. I think that's what I. I want that to be bait for a coil.
Thanks, Racket. Just no fire, no steel. All right, and yeah. If they if they attack Angrath and shock Angrath, that's five damage that doesn't go to me. As far as trying to win a race. No, oh, stop having all the phoenixes and no coils. Give me some coils. Just discard coil. one card left. You best start thinking fast. You're on your own. Maybe they can't, maybe they don't have enough card draw to get these things, these phoenixes back, maybe? Well, that Daredevil Shock Playcrafter costs six mana. I can Daredevil Flame Sweep and hope they can't get these phoenixes back. Really hope they don't have red finale. Okay, good. Burn we got over here. Together we are unstoppable. Heal. Get these burn spells out of here. So they do draw red finale. They don't get shocks and strikes. Now, if they if they have another shock, you know, like they are shocking the Ajani, not shocking me, and hopefully still not bringing. Yeah, there we go. See, it incentivize our opponent to use a a spell that brings Phoenix back. Hmm. Yeah, I was definitely thinking about playing Playcrafter here and making them discard a card. Make it harder to bring back Phoenix again. This means that, you know, they have that last shock. I can go Daredevil Shock. 
And again, taking out the lightning strike in case of drawing red finale. The lightning strike being in their graveyard with red finale means I'm like really close to, to being dead. All right. This deck's so cool. Because they do so many like cool things. Is it the most powerful deck in the format? No. Because we saw like the, the Simic deck that just had perfect curves into like Entrancing Melody, your creature, Nissa, Krasis, every sing you know, both games just kinda beat us up on just sheer power and then manipulation, but a bunch of cool little interaction, synergy, value. We are white kitty. That was our good luck kitty for today. That's what we found out so far. And it is raining hard here. I don't know if y'all can hear that or not. But just, like, it wasn't raining at all whenever I started streaming an hour ago. And it is now just all this thunder and rain pouring down. I'm in Virginia. Boo. Y'all probably heard that one, right? That, that lightning there. So if the stream cuts out... <laughs> That's why. So I should be playing Remodi here. Not necessarily. I don't like. I don't want to get rid of any of these cards. These cards are good. Like you know, like we're playing against the control deck. I want my planeswalkers against the control deck. Let's go Soren because Soren minuses and gets to three it's instead of two. So obviously having Playcraft or Sacrifice the Saheeli would be the best thing possible, but they likely just use removal and then get a 1-1 one, one, and then just sacrifice the 1-1. One, one. You should be proud to have come so far. That's the most likely outcome. I will lend you my strength. Oh, well, or not, or they really didn't have an, a spell to play, and I could have played Crafter to away the Sahili. Ever see a volcano erupt in person? You're about to. Dang, they figured it out. I thought they were gonna kill one of my planeswalkers, but yeah, they should be killing the knight there. Mm -hmm. 
All right, I'm going with the risky move. We need to we need to draw a land here because I need to play this Playcrafter. That's really unfortunate. Definitely needed that land. The weak feed the strong. Strength is so need double play, you know, play crafter minus the Soren, get play crafter back. Get rid of the token and the Sahili. <laughs> no pressure. If I dump if I dump Playcrafter and then resummon Playcrafter, all I do is get rid of the one one. That's not really That's not really uh anything that I'm too worried about, the one one. Why can't we just draw a land and get this Angrath out here? I'm not going to do the same thing again. I'm not going to risk it this time. Especially with their Sahili being reset to 5 loyalty. Embrace the bloodlust. Be strong. No, I'm not playing any Elder Spells. All right, so we're going to have Gideon. Extra command. To Spark Angrath. We'll take out Cavalier Troops. How are we feeling about Daredevil? They didn't play a lot of spells. They played like a Lava Coil. And a Shock. Maybe just two Daredevil. I could also take out Judith. Judith isn't spectacular here. I could keep keep Daredevil. Let's do that. Legion's End could take out a bunch of tokens, but I'm not that worried about him. Yeah, Playcrafter is awesome. Very good card. Especially with Soren. Playcrafter Soren is just a really cool combination. How about using Gruel Flash, using Vivian and Daredevil as a red Snapcaster Mage? I have thought about that. I thought about that earlier today, actually. I don't really know. You know, all what we're doing there, but that is really enticing. Having instant speed daredevils. Everybody always has shock. Yeah, definitely in the night pack ambusher. Obviously, yeah, that would definitely go in that gruel deck. For sure. I am not going to sit this one out. Trust me, I have a plan. Doubtful. I will defend the weak at every opportunity. Prepare for battle. I'm not sure if I was supposed to like just daredevil shot kill the Teferi. I don't know if Teferi is that valuable at the one loyalty here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nightpack Ambusher is, is awesome. Yeah, 
we, you know, I played the the ban arc bow list yesterday that was focused on night pack ambusher, and it was that card was awesome. Share in my light. You Retreat. just let me know if you're up for round two. Rude. Stand by and watch. There goes nothing. I believe in you. Should have seen that coming. Uh, yeah, this is a good one. I don't remember what album. One of the one of Silver Chair's earlier albums I listened to a lot whenever I was a kid. You know, back whenever you just had CDs and stuff. I remember I had one of their CDs. Open mind. To see you like seeing yourself what I see you. Your light will cleave the darkness. This was overwhelming. Yeah, the good old days of CDs. to meet my flames. <laughs> CD. I was not strong. Compact. Disc. Do you have anything good for me to Daredevil? Opt. Uh, how much damage can I do to them? 4, 8, 9, 10, 11. Then this goes to 5, and then I sacrifice it, so that's 16. Darn. Not quite lethal. And then I can do 2 with shocks. So I can do 18. So I can do 18 damage this turn. I will lend you my strength. We'll just keep playing this. The long game, though. Yeah, I could shock Chandra. I think just hey, playing casting tried. Opt is more valuable than shocking Chandra. I could definitely just play Crafter here, make them discard one of these two cards, and just sack the Butcher so they don't get to bounce the Butcher. It's not a bad play. All right, well, if we have an extra Playcrafter, we'll let's just go ahead and do that. There we go. Yeah, 
And this ranking stuff is tough. Yesterday we were nine and six, and we didn't, and we, we started at ninety nine percent. I went nine and six, so winning sixty percent of the matches in fifteen game matches, and we stayed the exact same percentage. And now I'm two and one, and we're down at ninety eight percent. We dropped a percent, winning over sixty percent of our matches since yesterday. <laughs> it's rough. The ranking gods have not been kind to me. All right, we need our, the white kitty. No, I went too far. Anyway, MTG Philly Dilly. Thank you so much for that sub there. You are awesome. So I didn't trade with the Lanwar Elf because my like whenever I whenever I went to attack like that, my opponent immediately like highlighted their Lanwar Elf. And that was like a, a clue not to trade. So I didn't trade. Yeah, this is this is a little unfortunate here at this mana situation. I have to say. However, that is, you know, trade that 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 butcher at that point now is a two for one because you know we're killing two creatures with it, so I think that's worth it. Do not fear, my friend. You can still fight. Why is it always Nissa? Nissa is the one card that's killing us. Deliver us to victory. I wouldn't mind drawing our one command, the Dread Horde. Get back this Wildgrowth Walker, these Jade Lights, and everything. That's the card we really want to draw here: is Command the Dread Horde. I will defend my allies. True goodness can never be corrupted. Behold, nature's. True power. Play this land.
Yeah, it's unlikely to matter. I'm kind of expecting them to grab a Spyglass to name Knight of the Ebon Legion. Like, Spyglass would have shut down both of my creatures. Hey, what's up, Gomez? Thank you so much for that sub, our fourth sub of the day. Y'all are awesome. Nissa has been responsible for all but one game that we've lost so far. Do they think that thing has haste? I think they think that thing has haste. Spring eternal. Question is, do you think Mono Red lost its tier one spot with the current metagame? And honestly not sure. I all I can tell you is I haven't been facing Mono Red very much these days. That's about all I can tell you there. <laughs> like, I have no cards in hand. All they have to do is just... just tick up on their card again and... They're just attacking for lethal. All they had to do is just make the statue a creature. Right? Oh, no. No, I guess they weren't. They would put me down to one. They do that, because whenever I block it, they don't get the trigger, because I would be killing the statue. Good game. Midnight Reaper does too much damage to us. We got it. Some pretty decent cyborg cards here. We're going to move away from a Johnny. Ooh, the lights just flickered with that storm. Hopefully we can finish out this league. Um, 
I guess the Blood Moon would make Nissa lands lose vigilance. I suppose so. I don't know if that's really worth a card. But I suppose that's how it would work. And we're down to five. Sorry, Commander Dread Horde. I'd love to have you, but just can't can't afford you. Uh, you can't just pay spectacle cost whenever you want. You. You can only do spectacle if your opponent is dealt damage. So I couldn't couldn't do spectacle last last game with Reveler. Yeah, I understand that the escape shift deck is popular right now, and that's why I have a Blood Sun in this sideboard. We haven't faced it yet, though. Also have Blood Sun not only for that matchup, but also for Nexus to stop Ascanta and Blast Zone. We'd be in a lot better position if we had all seven cards, if we had both of these cards in our hand. I'd honestly li like where we were at if we had that fourth land and the Command the Dreadhorde. So I, I need the Legion's End for the Wild Growth Walker. No idea why they're saying oops. Um, just don't think I discard either of these. I, so, like, I wanted to do that first to see what we drew. If we drew, you know, like, some expensive spell or whatever, like, some spell we didn't want, we could reveler or that away. But I think we just keep all of these. I'm not playing John Dinos today. Playing these decks and maybe tomorrow. That's not bad. That's not bad for us. I would much rather them use that Aelis, the Veil of Summer there than the Noxious Grasping the Nissa. They're just not going to play the Nissa. Let's draw land. We need to draw land. Mm 
or not. Honestly, I should probably just be playing the Reveler here. Reveler, hold up Grasp. But good chance they just have another Veil of Summer for how they played that. So still not bad because we can have the, the Noxious Grasp still kill Vanessa now. At least they're Veil of Summering things that we don't mind them Veil of Summering at least. But obviously, we need to draw a land next turn, or we're dead. Seek shelter in my stewardship. The land shall conquer you. Now we're just dead. Now Masker Girl doesn't kill stuff. That was really unfortunate. Ugh. Mold of five, put a land on the bottom, because we have the Reveler, and wish we, I would have just ditched the Reveler, kept the land. I mean, obviously we can't see you know, whatever that was, six or seven turns in the future. I guess that was like six turns. But that's that's the problem with getting to five. Flavor of the week. Yes, I... I do a sub battle Saturday, the last Saturday of every month. So that's this upcoming Saturday. So this upcoming Saturday, I am playing against subscribers for, for the whole stream. And it's a whole lot of fun. Uh, I put all the decks that I play up on a wheel and spin the wheel to see like what I'm playing and everybody brings their brews and everything. And it's just a whole lot of fun seeing different decks all the time. So yeah, if you want to join in on that, that's um, that's this upcoming Saturday. Uh, playing against subscribers, so that'll be so. Got to be a subscriber to play, and basically, it's like it's like random drawing for ever, for all the subscribers that are available at the time. Yep, and so that's that's the last Saturday of the month, and so we're gonna be doing that this Saturday. Of course, not attacking because they could have Trickster. I guess Trickster stops this thing anyway, doesn't it? Wait, does it? How's this going to work? I think even if I activate... Does it lose the plus three plus three? Okay, no, it doesn't. It loses the death touch, but not the plus three, plus three.
Man, I wish we had Masker Girl. So I'm only putting out one less power onto the battlefield here by just activating Knight. Because, you know, like, instead of putting out two power with Daredevil, we're getting one power with the Knight. But then, of course, we get to do three extra damage there. Also. It's incredible. Three games in a row of our deck not being very kind to us. Two really bad floods and one mold of five. All right, so we're cutting the daredevils. Late Crafter is not necessarily the best. Basically, three mana removal for one ones. Um, Angrass not terrible here, honestly. Angrass kind of underrated here. I guess I should be playing these Masker Girls. I don't know if I really should or not. If like. If the game plays like it did the last game, Asker Curl is very good, of course, but I'm not really expecting the game to play like that again, to be honest. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna play Masker Girl. I'm not sure if Gideon is better than Playcrafter. I'm not sure if I if I want to take out the other Playcrafters for Gideons or Midnight Reaper. I guess Gideon's better than Midnight Reaper. I guess Playcrafter is better than Midnight Reaper. Also, Midnight Reaper is not very good. All right, let's try this. I I don't believe Scape Shift is an oppressive deck. It's a pretty. It's not a statement that I believe is accurate. Shouldn't be keeping the five lander. I should just mulligan. Yeah, it's horrible. I should just mulligan that. Why, why would you want me to attack there, Redbeard? Why would you want me to attack and just trade my Butcher for a Siren Storm Tamer where my Butcher is much more valuable? So yes, I, I can trade Butcher and Play Crafter for these two. If I attack with Butcher, I kill, I kill the Storm Tamer if they block they will block and then I play crafter away the drake but then I have just absolutely nothing going on um if I if I play play crafter and sacrifice and I just play that first then I, I sacrifice butcher they sacrifice storm tamer I don't get to like do anything else with the butcher
Well, that would have been a lot better for us because I would have been able to trade the, the butcher for both of those one ones. But they had the counter spell. This is the Rakdos sleeve. So they're one man off of activating the Terramander, thankfully. I was definitely hoping that they would they would attack with the Surge Mare. Like I, I want. Wanted the Butcher. I want the Butcher to kill the Terramander. Or, you know, that's what I wanted, but... I guess I may have just gotten that spell pierced. That would have been kind of bad. Well, if I would have minus to take control of the Surge Mare, that, all that does is just kill the Storm Tamer. Plessing... Plessing Angrath was definitely the best play. Because minusing just gets rid of the Storm Tamer and then leaves it at one loyalty, where plusing gets rid of a card. Still, we got rid of the Opt. And was at five loyalty, which gave us a lot more life. We need Remati Revelers or something. Nah, we're just dead. <laughs> Thanks, Flavor of the Week. Thanks for the the kind words there. That was that was four games in a row of our deck just not not doing anything. And no, it's it's not that we're playing too many lands, even though we we flooded out ridiculously bad three out of the last four games with the other game just being you know like Mulligan to five and not hitting a fifth land drop after Mulligan 5, which is understandable. So we just had four games in a row there where we were not competitive because of lands, which just happens. You know, like, that's that's not like... It's not like we're, we're not playing... Or, like, that we're playing too many lands. We have 25, which is the number that we need because we need to hit land drops and stuff. But, you know, we didn't see, like, Revelers to smooth our draws or anything like that. And we just drew all lands over and over again there at the end um besides that the the actual games we got to play uh nissa was the, like the one card that gave us a real trouble um this is just a really tough card to beat 
That's just, that's just about about that. Um, Cavalier of Night didn't do anything. Um, Knight of the Ebon Legion was okay. About that, just basically like okay, wasn't spectacular, was okay. I'm not sure if honestly, I'm not sure if Knight. I don't, I don't know if I was really that happy with Knight of the Ebon Legion in this deck. Honestly, I don't know. The card that we used to have before that was Tithe Taker, and I I feel like not having Tithe Taker kind of hurt us. Tithe Taker like makes your Playcrafter better. And Tithe Taker works really well with a Johnny and Soren. And, you know, like, that Afterlife Flyer is pretty nice and, and everything. Tithe Taker does a lot of stuff. I'm not, I'm not sold that, um, I'm not sure if the Knight was better than Tithe Taker, to be honest. Uh, Dreadhorde Butcher, honestly, maybe I should just be playing Tithe Taker over Dreadhorde Butcher. That's, Dreadhorde Butcher is the card that has kind of been disappointing, probably more than, more than Knight. I think Dreadhorde Butcher is is maybe the card that's the the disappointing one in this deck. It just it doesn't like there's there's so many creatures in the format and it's it's really hard for Dreadhorde Butcher to to do any more than trade with like a two toughness creature. I think maybe that's that's the play is is whoops, get that reveler back in here. Taking out Butcher and putting in Putting in Tithe Takers. Tithe Takers are, are really good these days. There's a lot of, you know, like the, the different flash decks. Um, and yeah, it trades it trades really well. It's a it's a good card to, to bring back with a Johnny and Soren. Gets you like that extra body and everything. And my Masker Girls in the sideboard were definitely worse without without having like a Tithe Takers. Um I think that's the thing I'd want to change there. That doesn't necessarily help my Nissa problem, of course. But I want to try some Tithe Takers in here instead. I was not impressed. Um, with the Butchers. All right, so then then Cavalier of Night, like that's a that's a slot that could go also. If you take out Cavalier of Night, you have a lot of options. Um, can play second Judith, uh, second Judith, fourth Daredevil, second Angrath, second Command the Dread Horde. Play a Masker Girl main deck, or Masker Girl main could could be better with having the Tithe Takers in here. Um, another card that I I did take out because I was bringing in Legion. I had Legion's Ends and Noxious Grasp to add to the sideboard. I did take out the One Kaya's Wrath from the sideboard. And it kind of felt like we were missing the Kaya's Wrath. Of course, you know, I had to put the Blood Sun in there, too. I think I'd probably want a Kaya's Wrath in the sideboard again. Hey, Project Vanner. Yeah, a Seraph of the Scales or a Rekindling Phoenix. Those are all, those are also good options. Those are both good cards that we could be playing like one of. There's a lot of options, you know. There's a, a lot of good options there. Um, why not play Elder Spell? There's just not that many like pl dedicated Planeswalker decks and. And because of that, I don't think Elder Spell is one of the best 75 cards you can play. Like, there's so many good options. I don't think Elder Spell is really that necessary right now. Uh, we have Noxious Grasps, which those take out Nissas and Teferis and stuff. But Noxious Grasps is just a lot more versatile, can just do a lot more things against other decks also. So, yeah, kind of have an, an open slot here. They could kind of go any which way. Um, I think I like Phoenix more than Seraph. I 
if you'd go with one of those. I think I kind of just want the second Angrath in the main. And then that gives you room for Akaya's Wrath in the board. It's either that or play... No, it's probably just play a Masker Girl. Keep the second Angrath over there. Just have a Masker Girl. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's probably the plan. Just have a Masker Girl main. Have one main, one board with both of those cards. Just kind of split, split your aces there in the five drop slot. But pretty pretty cool little deck here. I uh, definitely, uh, I don't know about definitely, but like the two three record was a little rough for it because you know the last two matches we just didn't get to play Magic in any game, uh, which was which was just pretty unlucky. Um, but yeah, I think I think next time we play this, I want to try I want to play Tithe Takers instead of Dreadhorde Butchers, and give that a go. Um, so there we go. That's Marty Midrange. All right, so if you're watching this video later on YouTube, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, even with some of those mana problems we had, still a really fun deck to play here that just gets to do a lot of cool stuff. It's not the most powerful deck in the format, no, but there's a lot of little cool synergies and um, fun deck to play here. I, but hope you enjoyed it well. And uh, if you did, as well. Uh, and if you did, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons over there. But that's it here for Marty Midrange. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you for the next video.